Hello friends, let us now learn some important points about the types of wounds. Wounds can be classified into first and foremost two types. One we have simple wounds and second we have complex wounds. In simple wounds only the skin and the subcutaneous tissues are involved whereas in complex wound along with skin, subcutaneous tissue, even the nerves, vessels and tendons and even the devitalized tissue is involved in complex wounds then if you see we have classification of wounds where we have classified wounds into four classes so class one which is clean wound and uninfected wound in clean uninfected wound you will see this is actually a wound which you see after surgery this is an operative wound without inflammation in this clean op uninfected wound symptoms like respiratory system gastrointestinal system or genitourinary system uh, all these systems are not entered at all so this is wound closure is done primarily so if you see the examples of the clean uninfected wound these include inguinal hernia operation mastectomy thyroidectomy then these include uh, joint replacement operation or abdominal aortic aneurysm so all these are seen in clean uninfected wound then we have class 2 the class 2 is we have clean contaminated wound clean contaminated wound are the uh, wounds in which the respiratory system or GIT or genitourinary system these are entered but they are entered under control without unusual inflammation so here this includes these surgeries like cholecystectomy or common bile duct exploration or any elective GI surgery without any pus or wounds here everything is under control there is no infection and nothing okay that is clean contaminated wound then we have the third type of wound which is called has only contaminated wound these contaminated wound are those wounds which occur due to fresh accidents these are actually accidental wounds where the op op the the operations with major break in sterile techniques or even in surgeries if there is any break in sterile space techniques like if there is any gross spillage in genito in gastrointestinal tract in all these situations there can be contaminated wound so here you will see that there will be inflammation and you will mainly see that there will be acute non purulent inflammation is seen in this contaminated wound so the examples include appendicular perforation um, gastric perforation enterotomy any human bite or if there is any open fractures also come under this contaminated wound then we have the last type which is class 4 called has dirty wound so this dirty wound you will see presence of old devitalized tissues are seen here you will see that there is presence of infection is seen which is clinical infection is seen or there can be perforation of the viscera with high degree of contamination so the organisms causing Pro post operative infection are already present in the wound this dirty wound is associated with severe inflammation so if you see the examples of the dirty wound include these include perforated peritonite for perforated diverticulitis fecal peritonitis or okay so these are the examples of class 4 which is um, dirty wound then after that we have or uh, we have to learn about their percentage of risk of infections so if you see the clean wound this clean wound has five percent of risk of infection and no antibiotic prophylaxis is usually required then we have second type which is called has clean contaminated wound where you have risk of around 10 percent risk of infection of around 10 percent is uh, seen and antibiotic prophylaxis is usually required 
then we have third type where we see the contaminated wound with risk of infection to be 20 to 30 percent and here antibiotic prophylaxis is required then the final uh, type is dirty wound where you see that the risk of infection is 30 to 40 percent and here not prophylaxis but the treatment is required so this is about the anti sorry antibiotic prophylaxis then then we will see the last topic which i would like to deal in this class is how to avoid surgical site infections in there are some steps actually 11 steps to avoid surgical site infection one we have to follow proper hand washing and you will have to minimize the length of the hospital stay to the patient and also avoid pre-operative shaving if possible you will have to give antibiotic skin preparation is given to the patient bowel preparation is given to the patient at the time of induction just at the time of induction pre-operative antibiotics should be given and proper discipline and theater technique should be followed in the operation theater then we should avoid hypothermia that is pre-operative hypothermia is avoided then monofilament suture should be pre should be preferred over the polyfilament suture monofilament suture is preferred over polyfilament suture then there is proper apposition of wound is seen proper apposition of wound is seen and you will have to prevent the dead space and hematoma we should prevent the dead space and hematoma so these are the important steps where we have to um, how to avoid the uh, surgical site infection then so thank you for watching